Hello and welcome everyone. I'm very happy to be here and share my thoughts with you in regards to augmented reality for the industry. Um, so thank you very much for being here and sharing your time as well also. Um, my name is Karim. Um, I'm the CEO of the company Reflect. You're right, Jay. It's a German-based um, company. Um, startup, we founded in 2012. Meanwhile, 60 full-time employees, two locations in Germany, also here in Los Angeles. It's very interesting. I want to question the audience directly. Is augmented reality for enterprises really too expensive? And um, I would, because you had a survey, I would like to continue to make it more interactive. So who thinks that augmented reality for the industry is too expensive? Please raise your hands. So it depends. I know it depends in general. So why I'm coming back to you? <laughs> there are two reasons what I really, or let's say a question I always ask myself. There are a lot of surveys. There are different evaluations. There are different studies. And all of them say, with augmented reality, you can increase your quality. You can reduce your costs you can um, reduce errors, and you can increase your revenue. And I always said, if this is really so obvious, why don't companies or the industry implement augmented reality through the whole value change? Really from prototyping to the aftermarket, sales, marketing, and everything. So there are two options, either or. Of course, I, it's more high level. I don't want to go too much into detail. First of all, it's there is maybe not an ROI. There is not a benefit, what we all say and claim there is one. And secondly, it's just too expensive. Because if, is there any company without a website? Is there any company without a CRM tool? Is there any company without automated processes, whatever? No. Why? Because all of them invested it and implemented it because there is a benefit. So basically, um, I've been working in the augmented reality domain um, now for seven years. Um, I was sales director at Metayo um, in Germany, uh, which was um, acquired two years ago or three years ago from Apple. And I joined uh, Reflect 2013. And again, the same question. We've been talking with all the customers and saying, OK, this is augmented reality, and this is the benefits, and this is how you can use it. Um, but I would like to go back um, into the landscape 2010. I just clicked on, let me just check here. Back in 2010, it was a niche technology somehow. Yeah, of course, there were industry companies using augmented reality. We've, talking, we've been talking to different customers who were interested into that. But it was not a broad technology which is communicated in the meanwhile from all the technology companies, from B2C, from Snapchat, and whatever. So there is a big change in that that really um, we are going to the right direction, um, talking about almost all technology companies are investing heavily into that domain. You have Pokemon Go, P2C game, uh, reaching or hitting the one billion dollar revenue within very short term. So again, we have the technology world who's investing heavily into it. We have the proven track record in the industry or in the B2C market. Why does the industry not roll out such kind of technologies on a global scale. Just a brief overview about our company, uh, our customers um, uh, for which we are working for. Um, different industries, really from automotive to the classic machinery, from small and mid-sized companies to big, large industrial tech companies. Um, are already using augmented reality. So it's not the point that they are not using it, but they are not rolling it out. Um, you will see such kind of customer references almost and from every company here um, in the exhibition. But what we want to really emphasize on and what we want to highlight on is talking about a pilot project, one single encapsulated use case versus rolling out augmented reality on a global scale are two complete different worlds. So if you, because Jay asked the question, there are a couple of customers, if you want to um, start augmented reality in your company, always question your, uh, ask yourself, is the solution I'm heading for scalable or not? So again, coming back, is augmented reality too expensive or not? I compare augmented reality industry with the automotive industry. Some of you will say, oh, this is product, this is automotive, this is not software, this is something different. 
again, I just choose automotive because I like cars, first of all, and secondly, of course, everyone has an emotional binding to automotive and gets immediately um, the input out of that. Augmented reality is kind of the beginning of the automotive industry. There were pilot projects. The benefits are also obvious. I can sit in the car, I can come from A to B. Um, I don't have to feed it. In a sense, it, it doesn't die or whatever, like a horse. Very expensive. Also, the benefits were quite obvious. And the majority of the people would like to have it. It was just too expensive. So the question is, how do we get from here to there, to a mass production product, to software which everyone can afford and everyone is using? You all know the success story of, augment, uh, of uh, the automotive industry. It was Henry Ford and the Model T. It was the Industrial Revolution. First and secondly, the introduction of the Model T. He simplified production and he offered just one color black. This is another thing. I want to go into detail of that. He simplified production um, um, as a first step. And secondly, he made all the single processes in production available on site in one production area. Meaning you didn't have to order from different areas and you didn't have to involve other suppliers and other parties to produce that. You could do everything on site at the manufacturing plant. So um, just going to the next. The innovation was scalable at low cost. So this was really how the technology become widely spread. Another graph for that. Back in the 19th century, you needed a lot of people creating few products. And now it, this has changed dramatically. You have few people who can really produce masses of products, masses of software, masses of content. And I see the same challenge also in the augmented reality domain. We have to get rid from project development. We have to go into the product development. So again, the same. This is where we are at currently. Of course, it looks nicer, but the status is the same. Individual projects, you take the content from the customer, you get the cat data, you take all the information, you reduce it, you optimize it, you put it in Unity, and then you develop an application for iOS, Android, for OLEDs, blah, blah. This costs just a huge amount of money. For creating an augmented reality application right now, you need to have a project manager. You need to have a UX UI designer. You need to have a software developer, iOS, Android. You need to have 3D artists, Q&A, whatever. And the costs are really exploding. And we are just talking about one single use case. Again, coming back to automotive, I have maybe a prototype for one single car in one um, uh, combination or um, configuration, one repair procedure, one language, and that's it. But it's not the re reality. The reality is more, way more complex, and you have to be able to serve this. So how do we get from here to here? If you um, joined yesterday the session of my colleague Dirk, he said the Jarvis area. Um, it's the same. The technology has to be scalable at low cost. So from project management going to product development. And I'm really saying this to all my AR colleagues because there are a lot of companies popping up on a daily basis. There are hardware companies popping up and new devices pop popping up on a weekly basis. But everyone's still selling, offering single projects, pilot projects, and no one thinks about the scalability in the future. Because the worst case, what you can do in industry is you have a pilot, you have the high management who is really interested in getting into AR. You have a prototype which is very successful and the management says, yes, we have a proven track record, we want to roll it out. Now, how to do this? Then they, the manager who really is managed to have this pilot in the company goes to the supplier and asks, okay, that was fine, but I, have don't, I don't have just one car, I have 20 different types, I have 1,000 configuration possibilities, I have different languages, how to do this? And then every supplier says, bro, I need a couple of months and years, and this costs seven amount digit. Yeah. So, our core focus as Reflect is really the content, because we, are t we totally believe 
And we know it that the last year everyone was talking about the tech and the hardware. How can we track something? Is it SLAM? Is it model-based tracking, marker-based, extended tracking? There are solutions available. And hardware. Do I take the ODG? Do I take the apps and do HoloLens? Blah. Devices, smartphones, tablets, tangos, all good. There are hardware available, but no one is thinking about the content. So once I decide to go with the hardware, to go for a tracking, what happens with the content? And we say the same, content is king. Please start to think big, start to think to scale. The tech is already there, I mentioned, and scalable and cheap. This is exactly the example I, saw, uh, I said with the car. There is not only one car in one language for one repair procedure. There are hundreds and thousands just for one model. So how to scale that? How do we as a reflect scale? I don't want to pitch reflect, but this is general a workflow or let's say a process we are doing. We are focusing on the problem solvement, so we don't sell AR anymore and say AR has huge benefits. Now let's sit together at a table and see how we can utilize AR for your business. So we say, look, these are the different areas we're active in and what is your biggest pain point which we think you can mitigate or even um, get rid of with AR. It is not longer custom, so everything we do is out of the box possible with our software platform. Why? Exactly to avoid the situation if we do custom projects and they are successful and of course they will become successful because the benefits are obvious, it's not possible to scale afterwards. And very important, no need for software and computer vision experts. So we have to get rid of the situation that the company or a customer has always to assign experts to do this. The customer has to be able to do that inside his own facility with their own resources without the need of having these external experts. Especially here in Silicon Valley, if you're looking for software computer vision experts, good luck, it will take a while. Affordable solution for daily life scenarios. I think this we can um, let stand as it is. I would like to give you um, at the end an overview about the real case, best case example of one of our customers, Leibold Atlas Copu, a very big manufacturing company, globally active. Um, they're manufacturing these pumps, these are vacuum pumps. Maybe you know Hyperloop, this is one of the newest revolutionary transport um, ideas of Elon Musk. So he wants to have a new transport system, people traveling in a vacuum pump with up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. And of course, to be able to do this, you need a vacuum within these tubes. And these are the pumps who were really um, uh, deployed globally. And these have to be maintained. These pumps have to be repaired and they have to be operated. It's not possible for the manufacturer themselves to really do it global, on a global scale. They are using augmented reality to teach external service technicians to be able to really repair and maintain this product in a very high level and in a very high quality. All applications this customer does in different languages, whatever, they do on their own. They don't even call us. They have the construction data, they have the manuals, they have the images, the videos and all related content they can now simply publishing it in AR without even um, achieving or um, um, involving an external expert. This is done, okay, I have to do some kind of selling of course, um, I'm responsible for sales. Um, uh, possible reflect one, getting rid of software experts, getting rid of the need, having programming skills, completely integrated into the existing IT infrastructure, reuse existing content and how this works, there is a short Thank you very much for your time. With Reflect One's award-winning technology, take your maintenance and training processes to the next level by visualizing any data directly onto your machine, product, or working environment. Reflect One enables industry companies to create in-house augmented reality applications for visual instructions, interactive checklists, or training scenarios with existing editing systems. With the platform, we enable industry companies to use the very powerful augmented reality technology in a very cost-efficient, fast way. 
measured in real time from working sensors, Reflect One is an IoT ready solution that allows you to view dynamic data directly in your augmented reality app. In the past, software engineers needed weeks to program and implement individually programmed augmented reality apps. With Reflect One, the company's authors can do the same in just a few hours without any programming skills. Import, connect, and publish. Reuse your existing content such as CAD data, animations, rich media, diagnostic data, or 3D models and link it to real objects. Reflect One allows you to publish augmented reality apps to mobile devices and smart glasses for iOS, Android, and Windows platforms. Reflect One is the most powerful platform for creating augmented reality content in the industry.